I think everyone by now knows that Russian tanks have a weakness, which is that they tend to explode when hit. Of course, this doesn't always happen, but it happens way more often than with most tanks out there. The carousel autoloader is often blamed for this, but is it really its fault? Today, we will be taking a look at Russian or rather Soviet style autoloaders and see where the problem actually lies. First of all, it appears to me that not a lot of people know that there are actually two different types of carousel autoloaders used on Russian and Ukrainian made tanks. The first type is the Mechanism Zaryzhanya, called MZ for short. This type of the autoloader is used on the T64 and the T80 tank variants, and is the first type of the autoloader that saw service in the USSR. The other one is Avtomat Zaryzhanya, called AZ for short. This one was introduced on the T-72 and was then inherited by the T-90 tank variants. So what are the actual differences between the two? Well, the main difference is how the ammunition is placed in the carousel and how it is loaded. In the MZ, the projectiles are placed at the bottom, horizontally, and the chargers are placed vertically around the wall of the hull. This allows for loading the gun in one swing, where the projectile and the charge are brought together behind the breech and pushed inside. The AZ, on the other hand, has both projectiles and chargers placed horizontally, projectiles on the bottom and chargers above them. The loading also takes a bit longer because the projectile needs to be loaded first, then the charge after it. It also reduces the amount of ammunition in the carousel. MZ has a capacity of 28 shells in the carousel, while the AZ has capacity for 22. But the main advantage of the AZ is its increased survivability. Because the chargers are also placed horizontally, they are harder to hit. On top of that, the configuration allows for armor plate to be placed on top of the carousel, something which can't be done on the MZ. Granted, most of the T-72s have relatively thin sheet metal placed on top, which would mostly stop light frag, but it allows for improvements, something we will touch on later. Now, why did the Soviets even go with this idea? Why not place the ammunition in the bustle autoloader? Well, you see, this idea came in the 1960s, and it came as a result of studies which showed that moving the ammunition to the bottom of the hull drastically decreases the chances of it being struck. This was also shown on the American tanks in World War II, where the ammo cook-offs and detonations drastically decreased when the ammunition from the sponsors of the Sherman was moved to the bottom of the hull in the newer models. The principle here is the same. On top of that, the blowout panels wouldn't arrive until the late 70s, early 80s, almost 20 years after the design of the carousel outloader, and at the time, the production of these tanks has drastically ramped up, and doing any changes would have meant that the production rates would be impacted. There were designs and attempts to push the bustle outloader designs in the 90s and the early 2000s, but Russia had suffered a lot from the collapse of USSR, that any funding of such projects was often cut short. But that might not have been the only reason. You see, not everyone is so fond of having ammunition in the back of the turret. Main argument is that it is much easier to hit. That is, for example, the main reason why the Challenger 2 did not receive the blowout panels. Challenger 2 has just the projectiles placed in the back of the turret, projectiles like APFSDS and HASH, which can't be detonated when it's struck, since SABO is just metal and HASH is plastic explosive like C4 and cannot detonate from external fire. The chargers, on the other hand, are placed in the hull. Main reason for that, given by many sources, is that they simply wanted the ammo to be harder to hit and the design of the T-14 Armata also followed the same idea. All that being said, there are apparently Russian studies which concluded that it is not actually the ammunition in the outloader itself that is most often the problem, it is actually the ammunition outside of it, placed around the tank. You see, all of those tanks, T-64s, T-72s, T-80s and T-90s have extra ammunition placed outside the carousel, mostly inside the fuel tanks, inside the hull, but some of them often have them in the turret. The problem is that I couldn't really find any actual data on what percentage of explosions were actually caused by the ammunition outside of the carousel, since I couldn't really find this actual study. I see it often quoted in books and a bunch of other sources, but without actual raw data, unfortunately. I have mentioned this study in several of my videos before, and a lot of people took it as me saying that the carousel is perfectly safe, just remove the extra ammo from the tank. That is not the case. The carousel is still a vulnerable part of the tank. When hit directly, it will cook off or blow up, and if it is a T-80 or a T-64, the chances of it happening are even higher. Removing the extra ammo from the tank just decreases the chances of it happening, since there is less stuff to get hit. The T-90M has the extra ammunition moved to the bustle ammo storage, 
and has a carousel actually up armored, including the sides. The extra armor would protect against fragments, and it is something I referred to earlier when I said that there is room for improvements on the AZ. So yeah, this is it. All of this did not remove the risk of the carousel detonation or cook-offs. We have seen dozens of T90Ms with popped turrets or that completely cooked off. But the improvements should not be taken lightly. We have seen a lot of them get neutralized by an accurate FPV hit or a grenade drop after they have been abandoned. The improvements definitely do help, but there are of course many that got destroyed in combat. All this being said, there is actually a drawback to having all the ammo in the turret bustle. On top of previously mentioned easier to hit argument, the ammo in the bustle does not make the tank immune. In some cases when the ammo burns, it takes the entire tank with it. We have seen this happen with the captured Abrams tank. It was hit in the ammo and completely burned down after some time. Another thing is that when it doesn't take the entire tank with it, it most certainly means that the turret needs to be either changed or heavily refurbished. The fire affects the integrity of the turret, especially the armor, so it has to be changed. A lot of people have this idea in their mind that you just remove the burnt out ammo and place the new rack into the turret and you're good to go. No, that is absolutely not the case. But of course, that is a lot better than having the entire tank explode. That being said, the turret bustle is also easier to strike with FPV drones, but not like the Russian tanks have had it much easier with the carousel anyway. Now, placing the ammo in the bustle has another great advantage. It drastically increases the crew survivability. Even in the Abrams tanks and Leopard 2 tanks that we have seen burn down in this conflict, most of the time, if not every time, we see the crew evacuating the vehicle safely. Something which sadly can't be said about most of the Ukrainian and Russian-made tanks. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that these tanks are absolute death traps. No, not at all. My entire point is that, as much as the carousel can be improved, case in point, the T90M, it will keep being a problem. Of course, there are some things that can be done. For example, Russians are currently using old, extremely sensitive propellant and even the explosive fillers for their high explosive shells are pretty sensitive. That means that they burn easily. Germans, for example, have completely switched to insensitive propellants for all of their shells and are even using insensitive HE filler for their high explosive shells. They have even delivered these shells to Ukraine. These insensitive propellants and fillers drastically decrease the chances of the ammunition exploding or cooking off when struck. And if Russians could copy this from the captured Leopard 6, where they did actually capture this ammo, then if coupled with the improvements made to the T90M, there wouldn't really be that much need to make a new bustle autoloader, since the entire configuration would be much 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 less likely to explode than what they currently have. That would be all, if you like my content, you can support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day. Thank you.